everybody, welcome to Simple Art at Home with me, Laura Houston. Uh, today we have a fun episode all about folk art. Uh, before we get into that lesson, let's go ahead and take a look at some fabulous student art that you sent in to me. Kids art. Thank you so much for sending in your art to me. I love seeing your work. I keep my email right down there on the bottom corner of the screen so you know how to reach me. So for today's lesson, it's going to be for all grade levels, but I'm gonna show you an, like an easy version for our younger friends and a more difficult version of folk art for our older students. So everyone will need a piece of paper or two a pencil, probably a good eraser, uh, something to color with, either colored pencils or crayons or watercolor paints. And it's helpful if you have something black to outline with. I think um, that will be good for this activity today. So um, I will meet you over at the table. So here we have some examples of folk art or my interpretation of some folk art. Um, here we have some fish with uh, different shapes inside. And over here, um, this is a tree or a tree of life. This is more of the intermediate level. And then for our more advanced students, we have an angel. Folk art is traditionally very, very colorful. It's usually done by an artist who does not have professional art school training. It's something that's usually done as a hobby. So usually they have a day job where they earn money and then the folk art is created at home later on. So I am going to set these aside and I'll first show you um, how to draw the fish. And in my mind, the fish would be for, oh, our pre-K, TK, and kindergarten students. And I don't want you to worry about the ocean waves right now or the sky or anything. I'm just gonna show you how to draw a folk art fish. And then, um, then you can add what you want. But this is for, this is the early beginner lesson for our younger friends. Now, something that I did when I made these fish, and you don't have to do this, but it, I found it helpful, was I made a line with my ruler that was very, very light, because really you don't want this line to show, but it's just to give you uh, the, the guide for the, the fish, okay? So you can kind of see that. And then, uh, let's see, I'm gonna do a fish that's facing this way, like the one on top here. So I'm gonna turn my paper, and I'm just going to draw a line that kind of goes back like this to right here and another one over here and I'm just sketching a bit here there we go that's better it's better to sketch and then for the back part I'm just going to leave a line that goes straight down and then you can make any kind of tail that you want but really it's going to be something like this and that and then just connect it with a curve now I will draw this in darker so that you can see it better. So you're just going to have a line, one line that goes like this. 
and another line that goes from here to here. And this is just a way to draw a very simple fish. And then do this line here. And then for the tail, just have it go out on both sides and then connect. Now I'm going to erase that helper line that I started with. That was just to kind of help me make it symmetrical and keep it straight. There we go. Okay, so before I add some of the decorations, let's draw, uh, let's see, let's draw this line here that separates the face of the fish from the body. So somewhere like this, and I'm gonna curve it. So just draw a curve. Okay, and let me make it a little bit thicker. And then I'm going to use my thinner pen here to draw a smile, a little smiley mouth. Oops. There we go. And then for the eye, it I have a, a circle within a circle. So let's first draw the smaller circle. That would be the pupil. Something like this. I'm gonna choose a different pen. That one's a little bit drying out. Circles are not as easy as you think to draw. There we go. And then if you wanna get that little shiny spot right there, here, I'll hold this up so you can see it better. See that little shiny spot? You can, Draw it right here as a reminder first with your pen. There, and now I'm going to color in the eye black, but I'm going to leave that little curved four-sided, it's kind of like a curved rectangle, but that's that goes against the rules of math. It's just a four-sided figure there. There. Now, if you want, If you want, you can draw another circle around that circle. So here we go. There. Okay, so there we have an eye and a mouth. And then I just started adding decorations because with folk art, there's a lot of different designs and patterns and colors all throughout. So let's add some designs to our fish. Now here, I decided to use triangles for the body of the fish here. And here I used squares and rectangles, okay? You can choose your favorite shape or you can just do lines. Oh my, I can hear my little cat meowing. I think he's hungry. I'm gonna start with just some curves right here. Now I'm just offering suggestions. You can add any designs that you want. Uh, that's the neat thing about this. There's no wrong way. This is your art project. So I'm just adding a thin line. I think it's interesting to use a combination of thick lines and thin lines and I used little circles all the way across his back. Maybe you wanna do that. And if you don't have a black pen, you can just do this with crayons. Choose some, some of your favorite colors that you think will look nice together. And I kind of like the look of triangles. So I'm gonna make a triangle fish. And I'm just using triangles of all different um, shapes. So something you can do is turn your paper. So draw a triangle and then turn your paper around. Make one that's larger. They don't have to be all equilateral triangles. Do you remember from math all the different types of triangles? Isosceles. Those have two sides that are the same. You can draw a right triangle. And 
you know, obtuse triangles. There's all different kinds. So I'm making them all different sizes. It helps if you turn your paper because then you get a variety. And you can even mix circles if you want. Shall we mix some circles in this fish? of all different sizes. Now you don't have to create triangles. This is just this is just a fun idea. I'll make a little one right here. How about another little one there? What really makes it pop out though is the color. I'm just going through and adding shapes. It's just silly. Folk art is not realistic. It's not supposed to look real. It's just supposed to be full of designs and color. Why don't we add a few more circles here and there? Okay. And why don't we add some um, designs now inside of the triangles. Either some stripes. How about this one can have some little stripes. We, You can make some thick lines and some thin. That always looks interesting. You can add curves. Look at this one. I'm putting curves in there. You can color in. And I'll make some more curves here and maybe some lines going this way. The fun part about folk art is you can do whatever you want. Just go crazy with it. I'll make some more lines this way. And already our fish is looking quite interesting. I'll curve this. Just have a couple more. It's okay to keep turning your paper because that's how you get a variety of lines and designs. Curve there. Okay. Notice how I did a thick line here. I'll hold this up so you can see it a little bit better. So there's some of the shapes. Again, this this first fish is for more of our pre-K, preschool, kindergarten, transitional kindergarten group. But however, you know, anybody can make this fish and make it really interesting. I'm gonna draw a straight line going back. Let's divide up his tail into different sections so that you can color those different sections. I just drew lines on his tail. And now we can divide these up and you can do shapes in his tail if you want. Uh, we can do, why don't we do some circles, polka dots. You can do stars or hearts, zigzags. Why don't we do some wavy lines here? And I'll do some more wavy lines. I think I'll make his tail kind of symmetrical. There we go. Okay, so those are just some ideas. You can really take any creature or animal or anything from nature and fill it with strange designs and patterns. And it's not something um, that will, it's not something that's supposed to be real. It's supposed to be silly and just fun and beautiful. And you can just make your imagination you know, let your imagination run wild. You can even, you know, color it crazy colors that are not real life. If you want, you can add just a straight line of the ocean going across. Um, you can add sand underneath and seaweed going up. I'm going to show you how to, I'll, I'll just do this really quickly. I'll show you how to draw these waves like this. To do the waves, it's something like this. Takes a little bit of practice, but something like that across the top. And if you wanna draw sand on the, the floor of the ocean, you can kind of just do some wavy lines like this. And if you wanna do seaweed, 
I, I usually do seaweed like this. It kind of just loops up. And then when I bring it back down, I crisscross it over. So it just looks like it's kind of flowing in the water like that. And then you can do another one that kind of comes out from behind it. Something like that. And you can put seaweed across there. You can put bubbles, like little circles of different sizes coming out from the fish. And if you wanna make the little marks like that, you can do bubbles. And if you wanna add night sky up there or stars, that's just an idea for the fish. So this was a quick example for our younger students. And now I'm going to move on to more of the intermediate advanced lesson. But remember, if you need to pause this video just hit the space bar on your Chromebook or go back and watch it again from the beginning if you've decided that you'd like to practice drawing a folk art fish. So I'm gonna move our fish over for now. And let's look at these two pieces. I know some of the advanced students would do really well with let me try to hold that down. It's when you paint on paper, it, the paper ends up uh, curling up. I used watercolors on these. I'm going to leave uh, this angel up, this folk art angel up in case anybody wants to draw her because I know some of our older students like to challenge themselves. So I'll just leave this here as a visual. And then over here, I'm going to show you how to um, draw the tree of life or this tree okay and um, if I have time I will um, paint it for you or we can just look at that one in detail let's see if I can get more on the screen here so that you can see this a little bit that I think that works a little bit better okay so as far as the tree goes we're going to actually start with the trunk of the tree and I'm going to sketch lightly with pencil and notice that the tree is in front of these horizontal uh, landscape lines so I'm just going to sketch like a trunk of the tree and kind of go like that okay and as far as the branches go I think I did this a little too tall I want to bring it back down a little bit here because I want the majority, the beautiful part of the tree, like all those branches to start about halfway on my paper. And if you look at this, I have one, two, three, four, five main branches that almost reach off like, you know, think of five fingers that reach off and then break into even smaller branches and twigs. Okay, so let's try that. Okay, so I have this one over here that kind of branches off this way. And I'll just first start with the branches. We have that one. Then we have one that comes up here. And then another one that comes in this direction. Then one on this side over here. And then one in this section over here. Now, just so that you will be able to see it better, I'll go over this in a black pen because I know sometimes it's hard for you to see my pencil from at home where you are. There. Somehow I keep getting my dull pen, but maybe it's Maybe all my pens are running out. I'm gonna outline this anyway later with a thicker Sharpie. So that will be one here, and the second one. And you can do some thick and some thin, something like that. We'll do one over here like this. And then one going over this way. Okay, and then from here, uh, the hard part is just getting these uh, branches to fill into all of these little sections here. So we're just going to break it off. 
kind of curve it down something like that. And the pencil is just to, to guide you. You can have one like this. Just all the little twigs and we're going to put the circles. We'll add a few leaves too. There we go. Maybe we'll curve this this way since I have an opening over here. Something like that. We'll bring this up. Something like that. And then we have one more over here that will branch off this way. And in this direction. I'm not going to darken these in yet because I want to I want to make sure that the little circle designs are on top. So now I'm just going to go through and I think I can just I know I'm not going to make mistakes on the circles, so I'm just going to start drawing circles everywhere and I'll do kind of like a circle within a circle and make sure that they're all different sizes because you, I think they look good when they're all different sizes and they don't have to be perfect circles either. Sometimes you've seen me use objects from the kitchen to trace, but I'm not going for that type of look right now because folk art is very kind of like natural and it's folk art is not supposed to look perfect. You make some big circles too. I feel like on this tree, I didn't make the circles large enough. I can put, and even if it's not on the end, I'm trying to make them on the end of all the little twigs, but even if they're not, that's okay. Like you can have some free circles just kind of floating. Like right here, I can make one. It'll, it'll look good in the end. And remember, you can make this however you want. This is your folk art tree. Some people call this a tree of life. And on some of these, I put little dots in the center, or I put even three circles. If you want to do that, you can. A couple of these, I thought they looked like eyeballs. Like, I don't want to make them look like eyeballs. So... You can kind of just get a look at how I drew some of those. But I'm just going to go through and draw circles of different, like another large one here. And they can overlap. That looks good too. And you can do, you don't have to do the black outline. They can be any color that you want. They can just be in front of the branches. Look how many I'm making, that's a lot. Yeah. And then I'm going to go in here with the skinnier pen, the fine point, and maybe just do a few more fine lines. If you have different sized pens, sometimes that looks good. Okay, now from this point, I might add a few of the thin pen circles. And these circles could represent leaves, they could represent fruit. And like I said before, that folk art is not supposed to be realistic. Don't worry about what it's supposed to be because it can be anything. So now I'm going, now that I have the circles in place, I'm going to draw the branches going like up to the circles. And they're kind of, they go behind. And then I'll erase my pencil 
at the end. And it's okay if you have one that's just out there because it, it'll all look good in the end. So it's important to draw the circles before you finish outlining because you want the circles to look like they're on top of the branches. I'll, I can connect that. You see how I just did that? And I think um, when I'm finished, I will outline the all the main parts of the tree with the thick, the thicker Sharpie. And by Sharpie, those are my black pens that I use. I know the name's kind of funny, but that's the brand. Okay, we have that. Just going through and connecting. Okay. There. And now I'm going to erase some of the extra pencil lines so they don't confuse me. It's worth it to use some pretty decent um, art paper. If you're really interested in drawing, I'll show you again. Sometimes I show you what I use and it's not expensive. I have told you before that I don't spend a lot of money on art supplies. And once I get rid of all this little erasure, <laughs> then I'll show you what kind of paper I like to use. I have it right here on the floor. Okay, this is what I've been using lately, and it's from Walmart, and it's $3.97, and you get 20 sheets, and I only have one sheet left. I need to order more, but it's thicker paper, and it allows for you to paint on it with watercolors, and you know I use Crayola brand watercolor paints to get these these shades and and this is about um, I think it's also four dollars or at the most uh, I know that you can get one strip like this and it's a dollar ninety seven at Walmart in their craft section okay and they also have uh, everything on Amazon but there's all kinds of expensive if you're really into it there's a lot of expensive amazing um, art supplies but I think for the most part, you'll find that what I showed you is just fine. Also, another little trick is I took my ruler before I started and I made a little border. I just put my ruler down and I drew a pencil line because I think it makes the art look a little nicer if you have a border all the way around the edge. And I didn't measure. I just kind of eyeballed it to make sure it worked out. Okay, so here we have the tree and... Uh, why don't I show you how I did the landscaping? So with the landscaping, I have two lines. I have a line here and you have to make sure it goes behind the tree. Okay, so the first line, which is all like flowers and grass down here. So I'm going to curve it a little bit because it's just in nature and try to like get it right there, kind of near the same spot. There's that line, and then I have another line, which you don't have to add the second one, but I think it kind of adds interest. So it's gonna go up like this, kind of representing a hill, and then down. Okay, and for this section down here, I just drew uh, several circles to start with. And I put flowers a simple flower shape inside. So I first spaced out small circles and bigger circles all in here. Different sizes, of course. Folk art is usually very busy. And by busy, I mean there's lots going on when you look closely. So in order to fill it with the flowers, I just do a circle and then I do these very simple shapes. Folk art is usually filled with very simple, easy shapes and patterns. And um, if they're really little, you can kind of just do that. 
And again, you can just make it up as you go along. Just filling it here with flowers. And there's no right or wrong way. It's whatever design you like. And then I also filled the space with some leaves and I just did a very simple shape like this. I'm just trying to fill the open spaces. Again, we just want it to look interesting. This is definitely just an outdoor nature scene. You can add it. You can put little snails or little animals in it. This is your art, your folk art, I should say, and you can make it any way that you want. And if you feel like you have other spaces that you want to fill, just draw a circle and put some little flower pattern in there. Okay, so uh, for the back here, I'm going to draw another little line. I'm gonna draw another line here that just kind of parallels the first line. And I'm just making very simple curved little rolly mounds here. I don't quite know what they are, but I like how they look. I like the pattern that repeats. Kind of go off the page there. Okay. And then here I was kind of going for the look of a field with crops. So if you watched, um, actually you're gonna see a lesson for your Friday esteemed lesson and I show one point perspective. So if, um, if my point is right here, I'll just put, I don't know if this will work, but I'll just put my finger here. Like if this were my point on the paper, I want all of my lines going towards um, that, towards my finger. So that gives us the perspective there we go. And the same over here, they're going towards my finger. And it makes it look more um, three-dimensional. And here I just made up little shapes. And the trick is whatever's closer to the bottom is closer to the viewer. And then if you make a shape look smaller as it goes back, then it's going to look like it's farther away. To the viewer. So I'm just going to make, I don't know what these are, but I think they just add interest. And I'll do some interesting shapes over here that are again going to get smaller. Maybe they're little piece, you know, like lettuce growing in a field or something. So make them smaller as they go back. And here, again, I don't know what this is, but we're just making interesting rectangle shapes. Maybe they're stacks of hay or something in a field and just make them smaller as they go back. And here we can just do kind of like, I think I just did a little line there. And then we can do the same thing over here on this side. We're just trying to fill in a lot of space. We're gonna make these get smaller as they go back, something like that. And again, maybe we're growing more lettuce or whoever lives here in this field, make them smaller as they go back and larger in the front. And again, maybe we can do some shapes like this here. And again, make them smaller as they go back. Okay, so that's going off into the distance. And then I still want to uh, make the swirly design on the tree. So I'm just going to start here just because I don't want it to be plain. Folk art, as I said before, is very busy, busy and colorful, but it all kind of works, even though it's busy and colorful. And I'll just make some of the swirls go off like that. Looks like it's wrapping around the tree if you do that. We can make one go like that. And just fill all this space. Something like that. Oh, 
just adding more and more design. Okay, now um, the rest of everything else that I did, I I added with color. Oh, except these. Okay, it looks like I put some little circles um, to add more detail and interest. So I'm going to do that. We're gonna just fill in some circles all through here. You know, I don't know if these could be, you know, little parts of the leaves or flowers blowing off. And again, we're filling space and it looks interesting and it will add color when we finish. You can put them in here in these openings, even maybe a couple here. Add them over here. See how it kind of fills in the space with the tree where all the leaves are? Maybe one more there. We didn't add leaves. Let's add leaves. So I'm just going to do the same thing, a very simple leaf shape like that. And just wherever you see open spaces where it looks like a leaf would fit. And it, you don't have to crowd it too much, but you'll find natural spaces where leaves will fit. And you can make the leaves different sizes. They can be small, but it will add green, green to the art. See, so we can do another one here. Maybe up here we can add a leaf. Okay, so we have a few leaves. Maybe one right here would go nicely. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to just outline the main part of the tree because Look at the difference between these two. I used a thick pen to outline the outside of the tree, and it really makes the tree stand out a little more. The tree kind of gets lost in this one. So here we go. I'm just taking my Sharpie, and I'm going to Add it here. And I'm just going right on the lines that I made earlier with the thinner fine point. And I know this takes a little time, but it, I think it's worth it in the end because it'll make the tree look stronger and it will stand out more. It'll make it, because the tree is the most important part of the painting or the drawing, and you really want it to be substantial. Okay, now it looks like we have everything that we need to have in pen. I'm not gonna color the entire piece for you because that would take a really long time. Um, but I will show you, I think it's important to show you how I painted the sky. Because if you look carefully, I have colors all blended in here and you can still achieve this look with crayons, but I'll just show you how I achieved this. So I will be using my uh, Crayola paints. I'll put them up here and I just have my water. Okay. The first step I did was I colored the whole 
sky blue. Okay, and you know what I just remembered? I, I actually used a marking pen. I used a pink marking pen for all these little dots. So I'm not gonna take the time um, to show you that right now, but I first started by coloring the entire background blue. And I'm just gonna show you how I blended in some of the other colors. And notice how I'm leaving that margin along the edge uh, without paint. Just leaving it white. I'm just going around all in here. And you can, uh, you know, if you wanna color in the, like the fruit or the flowery part of the tree first, you can, you can, it doesn't matter. I think when I painted it, I actually did the brown trunk first. That just seemed natural to me. Okay. And if you're using watercolors and you don't want the paint to go on um, too strong at first, you just put water down on the paper first, just plain water. But that only works if you have thicker watercolor paper like I showed you. Otherwise, if you use notebook paper, the, the water kind of makes the paper fall apart. It'll get bubbly. Okay, so I'm just going in here, filling in all the background blue. I'm not going to paint everything. I'm just gonna show you how I did the sky because I think it adds to the interesting effect. Now this is a little time consuming, but you're gonna to wanna to get all in here because this is the sky that's peeking through. All this is peeking through the branches of the tree. See all through here. See all over here. Sometimes you can just add water and it moves the paint around. There. Just going through here. Okay, adding blue. This, um, this, this particular drawing will take you a while uh, but I think the end result is worth it. Okay. There's still more blue. Almost, almost there. So now uh, what I did with this is I started by adding yellow in some of the V's in this branchy area, but I, I left everything underneath the branches just blue. I didn't touch that. So I'm just grabbing yellow and I'm going to add yellow in here. And it's mixing with the blue. It's making a soft effect here. Okay, my cat just jumped on the table. Nope. Oh, okay. The, oh, sorry, everybody. He, oh, oh. <laughs> sorry about that. Animals, right? I have three cats in this house, and they're so curious as to what I'm doing, of course. Okay, so I'm adding yellow. And then he jumped. What you heard happen was he tried to jump on a, a table right next to me. And I had my art papers on there and he slipped. But he's okay. 
So look at the interesting effect already. Now here, I'm gonna add some orange to this blue. I'm gonna add orange in here and all through here. And it just, it makes more of a magical looking sky. This is like a yellow orange here. You can add red. And um, I'm gonna add red around the edges up here. And it all just kind of works in the end. And if you're using crayons, just uh, overlap the colors. Just color on top of the other colors. You don't have to, but I think it, it gives an interesting magical look to the folk art. And it all, see how it's all kind of just working, but don't do it down here, only towards the top section. So I'm gonna go all the way around the top and add red to my blue. You have colored pencils, you can make this work as well. It almost gives a purpley look because red and blue sometimes, well, they make purple. There's Charlie's hair because he just stood on my art. It happens. We have three cats and a dog and a hamster and a bearded dragon. What else? Fish. We have a lot of animals. Okay. And if you want to add purple in the background in the sky, you can add purple. Um, I might add a little more yellow around here. But, you know, just practice and see how it looks. And for the rest of this, I think I just colored in um, just as I would normally paint. I'll show you one more thing that I did. Okay, so down here, I used yellow, but then I put a little bit of brown, like for the earth, the dirt, on the sides over here. I just added, can you see how I just did that? Mixed a little bit. And sometimes I added a little green too. So I'll just show you how I did that. So if this were kind of a, this is an orangey yellow color right here. And I think I did like an orange here. And you want the tree to stand out the most. Okay. And then here, I just am adding some brown, just kind of on the side. The paint's really wet right now. Usually I let it sit for a little bit, but I'm just adding a little brown and it, it has an interesting effect when it's dry. And you could, I think here I mixed some green because I want, I wanted these to be earth tones, you know, the colors of the earth, like greens and browns and yellows. But um, I think that's all I will um, paint for you on this tree of life. And why don't we look at the finished products a little closer. Okay, so we have this tree of life. I'll just hold it up for a minute so you can look at it. Notice how I put little, little brown marks. I don't know if they're rain or just marks of interest because folk art has a lot of just random marks and I added just some other blue circles in the sky. I didn't outline those because I wanted them to fade. So those little brown marks are everywhere. 
think it's kind of like rain or maybe they're seeds. But you can look at that closely. With this down here, I did green, but I also used brown around the edges. And so I'm going to set that there. Let's take a look at um, this angel closely. Okay, so notice how her wings are cropped. They go off the page, but as the viewer, we just know that they're supposed to be there, but they would go on. Um, her face has a lot of just lines. And remember, it's not supposed to be realistic. I put a little necklace on her and a heart. I mixed marking pen and watercolor with this. I added a traditional folk art style bird to her halo at the top. I tried to use all uh, these warm tones on her wings. Reds and oranges and yellows are warm tones. And then the background purple is a cool tone. So that's the purple sky. Notice I did not use black for the sky. Whenever possible, I try to use purple instead of black and I think it makes it look more interesting. And her hands are a very simple shape. And um, you can see how I kind of curved her, um, her wrist, like the cuff on her uh, robe or her gown that she's wearing. And I put some stars in the background but a lot of folk art has to do with the bright colors that you choose. And it's always a very simple design. So here we had the tree of life. We have a folk art angel. And then over here for like an easier assignment, we had some folk art fish um, that might be fun for some of our friends out there. So I hope you enjoyed um, this lesson today. I'm just going to put these all right out here so you can look at all of them. But um, I really enjoyed making these. They took a long time, but I think it's worth it in the end. So just take your time and color the whole paper and just add as many different designs and patterns as you can. And remember, it, can, it doesn't have to be realistic. You know, fish aren't these crazy colors and they don't have triangles and squares, but anything goes with folk art. That's why I like it. Okay, so I am going to meet you back up at the easel. Okay, so let's see if we can get both of these on here, kind of. So I hope you really enjoyed um, making folk art with me today. Please send in pictures of your artwork. I keep my email right there on the bottom of the screen. I'd love to see what you do and I may show it in a, in a future episode. So um, thank you very much for joining me today. And before I go, um, just wanna remind you to wear your mask and stay safe. And let's take one last look at that fabulous kids art. Bye-bye. Kids Art 